Hello everyone, welcome to Farming in Africa YouTube channel. You're about to channel for everything livestock information. Well, after we brought you away with the video between Farming in Africa and Dr. Shandoff, the veterinary surgeon who has now decided to focus on livestock farming at his beautiful five acre farm, I think. Well, we got a lot of DMs, a lot of requests asking to get more knowledge from this obviously very knowledgeable and intelligent man that time we spent with him definitely wasn't enough so we find ourselves today at this beautiful farm somewhere in the eastern region guys even the air quality here is different and permit me to just tease you a bit because i wish you were here to experience it for yourself and no i am not exaggerating so today we are here to glean more knowledge from him because obviously we we have to we need it for what we do as well and so if this is your first time watching us welcome once again to farming in africa channel and we are all about livestock farming and we also are interested in what is happening in other aspects of the agricultural sector do stay tuned and if this is your first time like i said please subscribe to this channel Comment under the comment section to help with the engagement and to let it reach people with similar interests like you. Do like this video for us. And of course, if you're already a subscriber, thank you, but you know what to do. Hit the notification button so you wouldn't miss any updates we bring away. We shall be back. Welcome back. For those of you who haven't watched our videos with Dr. Shandov, I would please ask you to go through our videos and just enjoy it because it's a depth of information we brought you. Well, we are back here with Dr. Shandov, full name Dr. Defensi Soja Shandov. Yes, with years and years of experience garnered from all over the world, from Romania to Sweden to Scotland. Guys, we are just going to interact with him today. Anyway, Dr. Shandov, take me to your consultancy years and services because you tell me at your age you still go around consulting for farms and everything so in that area i would also want you to talk about labor in the part one of our videos you touched briefly on labor and i think it struck a lot of raw nerves in people so it obviously is a huge issue out there so talk about labor and your consultancy services, which you still render to people anyway. And share with us the wild experiences you have had driving to all of the remote places to offer your help. Mamma mia. <laughs> labor is the biggest problem when it comes to the livestock industry. Wow. You see, the workers come with a whole different mentality. Yes. Uh, they are interested in making money, yes. but uh, they are not interested in how the business develops for money to be made from the business. Yeah. So most of the time, livestock workers keep investing, 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 investing yes. and uh, virtually nothing comes out. out of it. And... Uh, you get workers yeah. who come to work with uh, you and for one reason or the other, they decide, ah, I'm working at the piggery and not at the uh, rabbit tree. Yeah. Uh, I'm working at the uh, piggery and not at the goat pen. Yeah. Or I'm working at the livestock, uh, the, the cattle, ranch and not at the piggery. Yeah. So anything going on mm -hmm. at these other sectors, mm -hmm. they claim that is not where I work. Yeah. So once you make sure you get your workers working at all sectors, yeah. because there are times when we have to do Maybe vaccination at the goat pen or at the piggery, yeah. and uh, the animals have to be restrained, mm -hmm. and then you need all hands. Yeah. You can't say only the two workers at the place should, should engage in that yeah. sort of activity. Yeah. You, the workers must understand that uh, once you are working for me, you are 
everywhere. Yeah, you, you do right. anything I ask you to do. And uh, you will try to do that. So you lay down that rule? Yes, but... Before you, they even start their operation. But when you are an absentee farmer, eh? yeah. when you are not on the farm yeah. daily, yeah. or when your uh, farm uh, manager mm -hmm. is not on the farm daily, yeah. the workers start, you know... Uh, yes, uh, they want to share the job. Me, I'm here, me, I'm there. And, yeah. uh, all these are problems that... Uh, so let me ask you this. As, let's say, the owner of, of a farm, mm. how do you instill that trait, that sense of ownership into your, into your laborers? I don't even want to use laborers, into your workers. Mm. So they don't feel like, I belong to the section, I don't work at that section. How do you instill that? Uh, it's a difficult thing that uh, I have tried to do mm. all through. Okay. Uh, when the workers come, I tell them right from the beginning, okay. you do anything and everything that you are asked to do yeah. okay. on this farm. Yeah. And then, then uh, also, not only that, mm -hmm. if you uh, handle them that way, then if anyone is not complying, then immediately you have to react so the others understand okay. that uh, if you don't comply, yeah. this is the result. Wow. So, Doc, take me to some of the trips you've had to people's farms. Talking about labor and certain things you've witnessed. Generally, let's maybe even limit it to Ghana. What, mm. are, what have been some of your experiences on people's farms when you went there as a consultant and you saw how operations were? How do you think the animals were being treated? Do you think we have enough knowledge on livestock farming in this era to operate it profitably? Um, there is the book knowledge, but the practical knowledge yeah. is lacking. There are so many uh, that have the book knowledge. Theoretically, they know this and that is mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that there are so many things that uh, are not written in the theoretical books. Yeah. The book knowledge is available mm -hmm. at Ministry of Agriculture, mm -hmm. at the uh, Agri uh, Research uh, Institute, yeah. uh, uh, CSIR. Yes. The, the book knowledge is all over the place. Now, personal is issues mar everything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, it uh, covers or blocks the practical knowledge. I see. So the practical knowledge should be made to work hand in hand with the book knowledge. Because there are so many things, I can give you some uh, examples. Mm -hmm upon examples. Yeah. Um, I studied in uh, Sweden and during artificial insemination I was mm -hmm. taught uh, and even in Romania that uh, cattle mm -hmm. uh, would kick sideways. Okay. So don't be by the side, be by the side to treat the animal, uh, animal at the rear end. Okay. Now, so uh, in, in in the at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I came to Ghana and approached the animal to treat. After restraint, the animal has been restrained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After re restraint, I approached the animal from the back. And then the animal twists the mm. waist mm. and 
Bang! Kicks me at the back. Wow. This is practical. <laughs> you see? Yeah. In the book, you read that... Uh, they the, kick the from the side, so don't be at the side. Yeah. So don't be at the side. Yes. But here I am. On the ground, you were uh, kicked. And the animal kicked me when I was approaching <laughs> from the back. Wow. And, and that is not the, the only thing. There are so many uh, small, small things yeah. that uh, you, you won't find in. So please help me out here. How then do we bridge the gap between the book knowledge and the practical field knowledge application? How do we bridge the gap in the application of these two sides? I, I, I think the only way we can do that is to educate our technocrats wow. uh, that there is a practical side to everything. Yeah. They would understand better. They would understand they better. They would understand better that there is a practical side yeah. to everything. Yeah. Uh, when you try to uh, guide a, a lay man yeah. into understanding certain things, it is very, very difficult to, to get the layman to understand. That is why you must have managers who are knowledgeable, mm, who that. can guide yeah. the workers, do this, do that, do this, do that, don't wow. do this. You, 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 so you see what I mean? Don't try to cut down costs as, a, as an owner or a farmer by going for people who are not so knowledgeable at the beginning because you pay for it in the end, right? Mm, uh, what I would advise in that vein is that yeah. uh, when you have a farm, yeah. get a knowledgeable farm manager wow. Wow. who is present on the farm and who guides the daily uh, activities on the farm. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed. Don't take a farm manager who is yeah. living in Accra and then the farm is at uh, Beji. Wow. <laughs> Guys, I promised you that it's going to be an impactful session and I think Dr. Shandov has more than delivered. There are a couple of things he touched on which really struck a chord in me because he mentioned don't be an absentee farmer. Go through our previous videos. There is a particular video Fred made on don't be an absentee farmer. And I'm happy Dr. Shandov has reiterated the importance of not being an absentee farmer. Also, he mentioned the importance of knowledge in this field we find ourselves. And when I asked him how to bridge the gap between the book knowledge and the practical field knowledge application, he just used one word, education. And that is what Farming in Africa YouTube channel is for. Generally, all of our social media platforms as well, we seek to bring out such quality education on livestock farming because we want to share this knowledge of tried and tested methods of proving concepts, which we believe when it goes out there, it would help all of you out there who are either aspiring to join us in this livestock farming business or in who are already doing this business as well. Let's go back to Dr. Shandov and get some few last words from him because remember at the beginning of this video, I chanced on him putting some ingredients together because, you know, things had to go on. Well, that process has come to an end, so I really have to let Dr. Shandov go so other things can be taken care of. So, Doc, give us... Your last words when it comes to handling labor issues in livestock farming in Ghana. We need, and we need very much to plan well yeah. and be strong. Yeah. When we say no, it must be no. Yes. When we say I can't accept this sort of attitude, yes. it must be I can't accept this sort of attitude and it must apply to all the workers. Wow. You've heard it all. Dr. Shandov has literally told us some of the secrets. In fact, I would call them his trade secrets because he's been in the business for a long time and he is no doubt a successful person at what he does. So guys, 
He has said it all and I want to say thank you for sticking with us through to the end of today's session. Today we came your way with a video from another part of Eastern region, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere called Dinsawam, at Dr. Shandov's beautiful farm called the Peace Haven Farms. Thank you so much as always, and we will see you in our next video. Dr. Shandov, let's say bye-bye to my audience. Bye. Guys. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye.